Greetings! I have made a most intriguing discovery. Come here, come, look, quick! I call it the Squiddy Amber, and if you look closely, you will see the DNA of something long lost to time. Closer! Closer! Come on, it's not going to come to life and take over an amusement park. There. Beautiful, isn't it? This is the Squiddy A, and no, this is not a quick draw. It's been a while since we've had a full review, hasn't it? Full disclosure, Squid Industries did send this product to me for free for the purpose of this review, but any and all opinions expressed within this video are my own and not influenced by Squid in any way. Along with the Squiddy A, Squid also sent me a bunch of cool stuff like stickers and a lanyard. Thanks, Squid. Here's a quick look at the unboxing experience of the Squiddy A. It comes in Squid's new pull tab box, and when you open up the box, you see that the Squiddy A is nestled within its little sheath. Getting it out of the sheath, you'll see that it comes with a cool little bite handle indicator, which all of Squid's Squiddy lineup now comes with. Very cool. So let's talk about the Squiddy, eh? Because I guess I'm Canadian now. <laughs> The Squiddy A is the newest member of the Squiddy lineup, and it bears many resemblances to its predecessors. But is this just a glorified Squiddy B? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Bye! No, 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 come back. Despite the very similar design, I do think that the Squiddy A stands on its own as something more than just a glorified fresh coat of paint for the Squiddy B but not exactly in the ways you might expect. While the design of the blade might be exactly the same as previous Squiddy models, much like the glider lineup, it's the differences in the handles that really matter. The brushed acetal of the Squiddy B has been replaced with a amber-colored translucent plastic called Altem, which invokes the appearance of the now discontinued Squiddy C, while also showing off things like the hardware, pins, and washers throughout the handles. The blade may lose the transparency that the Squiddy C offered, but in return you get a black acetal blade that should hold up much better to damage and scuffs than the Squiddy C previously did. Overall, I quite like the look of the Squiddy A. The bronze and black color scheme is really nice in my opinion. The Ultim of the handles makes for one of the best feeling plastic balisongs in terms of quality, especially since Squid is not 3D printing these like other makers in the space. It doesn't help with tolerances at all, but anyone who really cares about tap on a plastic balisong has some bigger issues to work out. Speaking of Ultim, what the hell even is it? Simply put, it's a high strength plastic that offers an almost 50% increase in tensile strength over the acetal of the Squiddy B. This means that the handles at least of the Squiddy A will be much more durable in situations where the material is being pulled or stretched, while also positioning the Squiddy A as one of the most durable plastic balisongs on the market, at least in theory. With all this talk of durability in the Squiddy A though, I can't help but wonder if the Squiddy B really needed a durability bump in the first place. The Squiddy B was already a very durable flipper with my personal unit holding up to over a year of concrete drops and abuse and still flipping perfectly fine. I'm sure the extra durability doesn't hurt, especially in a plastic balisong, but when you take into account that this costs almost $20 more than the Squiddy B, it could feel like you're paying a good bit extra for just a bump in durability and a design change. Thankfully, the Squiddy A also offers a difference in its flipping performance, and while it may not be as drastic as something like the OG Squiddy compared to the Squiddy B, it is certainly noticeable and, in my opinion, appreciated. Now, let's get into the technical weeds here. Squid's website lists these two balisongs as the exact same weight, but digging into it and flipping them, I found that the Squiddy A's handle specifically felt lighter than the Squiddy B's. So I did some digging and found out that the density of the Altem used is actually less than the density of acetal, meaning that my intuition was correct and that the handles of the Squiddy A are indeed slightly lighter than the Squiddy B. This provides the Squiddy A with a much more neutral balance, which when compared to the Squiddy B, leaves the Squiddy B almost feeling a slight bit more handle biased 
and a bit more shaky, specifically in fans, while also completely obliterating the OG Squiddy in terms of flipping performance, in my opinion. I don't really like the OG Squiddy as much as I used to. It's just way too handle biased. Getting back on track though, the Squiddy A flows through tricks relatively well with the best fanning performance in the entire lineup. Rollovers and Chaplains, however, feel unaffected by the slight balance change because at the end of the day, that is what it is. It's slight. And I'm not even talking Tonto versus Bowie Kraken or anything like that. When it really comes down to it, I hesitate to even say that anyone who will be purchasing a Squiddy A would really notice the difference in between these two as flippers. Meaning that if you're someone who already likes the Squiddy B, chances are the Squiddy A is also going to be good in your book. At the end of the day, they're both Squiddies, and specifically the Squiddy B's cousins, the Squiddy U and the now discontinued Squiddy C, haven't really had any crazy design changes, meaning that there's only so much that's going to change. The slightly more neutral balance could be something that you're after, but if you already have a Squiddy B, is this really worth getting, especially for the $20 extra? Unfortunately, while Altem may be responsible for most of the Squiddy A's strengths, such as its more neutral balance and its higher durability, as well as its pretty nice looking design, it's also responsible for many of the Squiddy A's weaknesses in my eyes. First of all, the Squiddy A is slippery, very slippery. Squid's own website says that Altem is supposed to be used in applications where low friction is needed, and unfortunately, Friction is what provides grip, especially on a ballast song that has no texture or jimping of any kind. If you're in a humid environment, it's fine. But if your hands are dry, or heaven forbid it's cold out, good luck. The Altem of the handles also has this weird feeling that hasn't really gone away since I got it. It makes this audible, almost brushing sound whenever you flip it and it rubs against your hands. And it's a sound and an experience that I'm not too particularly fond of. It's not as unpleasant as something like G10 usually is for me, but it is still something to mention, especially if texture is something that you look for. And finally, we must talk about the inevitable value proposition when it comes to a Squid product. While it is true that the Squiddy A is probably the most well-constructed plastic ballast song, and in theory the most durable, the price of $75 seems just a bit off to me. Especially now that something like the Edit Light and the Calico exist, and both of them, if you don't customize the Calico, run for about $25 cheaper. But maybe that's just it. The Bala songs that I mentioned all have something unique that makes them stand out amongst the crowd. Maybe the Squiddy A's is its durability. Maybe this is the ballast song you're drawn to if you're looking for a public flipper that you're not afraid to drop on concrete. Or perhaps maybe you just like the design or just don't want to buy a 3D printed ballast song and would rather have something a bit more quality. Overall then, I think the Squiddy A sits uncomfortably in my third place in my top three plastic ballast songs, sitting just behind the Edit Light and the Tay Flipper. Quick draw coming soon. Ooh. Although, to be honest, I see this easily getting knocked out by other designs that I haven't had a chance to try yet, like the Cycloid V2, I'm coming for you, or future plastic ballast songs in general, as the other makers refine their process and improve the products that they put out. So in short, is it good? Yes. Does it stand on its own as a member of the Squiddy lineup? Mostly, I would say. But mainly if you're looking for something that's going to be a bit more durable that you can flip in public. If that's not something you're looking for, however, I would recommend the much cheaper options on the market, all of which I definitely think flip a little bit better and just have that unique little pizzazz that some people are looking for when they're asking if they should add a ballast song to their collection. So that's the Squiddy A. It's a weird little guy. Thank you all for watching, and thank you again to Squid for sending this thing out for review. I really appreciate it. I will leave a link to all of Squid's stuff in the description, and while you're down there, you can check out my Instagram and Blade Bias, where I have been uploading basically every other day for a good while now, so if you're looking for some more content from me, check me out there, and maybe throw a subscription at me if you enjoyed the video while you're down there. You could. I mean, you don't have to, but, but you could. Now, I have more important matters to attend to. I just got a call that there was an observed sighting of a wild group of squiddy seas roaming around outside, which is strange because I thought they were discontinued, but okay, what do I know?